means what it says, Rick. Well, hello, Bat. You figuring on making it come true? Easy for a top gun like you to find out. No, thanks. Who ordered this layout? Town council. They claim you're a black eye to the community. They're tired of strangers asking to see where the famous gunman used to live. They'd rather show them where you were buried. What are you supposed to do, shoot me on sight? Perhaps, or hang you at daybreak. Well, you better make it tonight. You'll be too busy in the morning. I was wondering what brought you back here. Spill it. Quentin and his raiders are hitting Casper at sunup tomorrow. Quentin, huh? How do you know? Found out from Quentin himself. He figured I hated this town enough to join up with him. Now, what would Quentin be wanting with a peaceable little town like this? Fresh horses, provisions. And he found out his old sidekick, Bat Davis, is town marshal. And you know how he hates anybody who once rode with him and quit. I only rode with him against outlaws. When Quentin turned outlaw himself, I quit. Just how strong is he? Yeah, he's still got about 15 men. All right, Rick. Forget that I saw you. Get on your horse and ride. And now don't go back through the town. I was kind of hoping to be invited to the party myself. Well, that'll suit me fine. But it's up to the town council. I can hear him now when I bring up your name. Well, why don't you try him and find out? Give me time to feed and water my horse. All right, stick around. I'll call the council together. for trial. I had my doubts, but the people had. Most of them believe you rode into town that day just to gun down the cop, with the whole town looking on. That triple score of yours did something to this place. Scared them bad. I reckon this is the most gun-shy town in the West. Where'd they all come from? Word gets around fast. Rick Martin, fastest gun in the West. That's what they say. I'd sure hate trying to prove different. Well, stick around. Maybe I'll prove it for you. You crazy limb sutter. You wouldn't have a chance. I uh know. -huh. He looks like a big, easy target to me. What size got to do with it? It's speed. Nobody can outdraw that Rick Martin. You want to know something? I can. Where'll you be going? Put up my horse and see the only friend I've got. He's still running the hotel. Jim O'Hara? Yeah. Well, then you're on your own. Don't give me no trouble. Well, I won't. Unless it's forced on me. That opens up the pot again. Better let me hold your guns. No. No, that way there'll be trouble for sure. Just seeing them on me keeps most smart alleys quiet. Yeah, I hope you're right, for your sake. Mr. Marsh. Yes, Mr. Turner? What's that murderer, Rick Martin, doing in our town? I don't know, ma'am. Well, you're a councilman, and you too, Hank Spencer. Why don't you do something about it? Well, there must be some reason why Marshal Davis didn't arrest him. There can't be any good reason for allowing that murderer to walk our streets. Good morning, Mrs. Turner. Hello, Ed. How do, Rick? You'll have to excuse me. I've got customers waiting. Well, I'll go in with you. I need a few things. Lost my saddlebags. Need some soap, razors, tobacco, a couple of shirts. I'm sorry, Rick. But as councilman, I... 
Well, I can't afford to be seen doing business with you. You've upset the whole town. You really shouldn't have come back at all. Well, I didn't come back to this town. I came back to a memory. This isn't it. What's become of that necktie party this town's been promising if Martin ever showed his face here again? Trying to hang Rick Martin with his guns on ain't my idea of a party. Ah. You're like everybody else in this one-horse corral, long on talk, short on action. Tell you what, Lem, you take his guns away and I'll get the rope. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> You won't need a rope. Just call the undertaker. Something in your mind? Reckon you don't remember me. Sure I do. You're Lem Sutter. Excuse me. Wait a minute. What's your hurry? You and me's got business together. What kind of business? Draw poker. With guns. You're playing solitaire. What's the matter, Top Gun? You scared? We'll make it a three count. Slow and easy. One. I don't hear nobody laughing now. The big man weaseled out on me, his yeller. But I ain't through with him yet. Howdy, Councilman. What do you make of it, Canby? Rick Martin roaming around free as a bird. Marshal Davis usually knows what he's doing. Let's go have a talk with him. Son, I was wondering if you was going to pass me up. Not likely, you old sidewinder. You're looking good. Well, I've been cashing up on my sleep since you left. You staying in town? I don't know yet. You got a room I could freshen up in? Sure. Better take number three upstairs. It's got a door leading onto the side porch, just in case. Thanks. Hey, you're traveling kind of light, ain't you? Where's your bedroll and saddlebags? Left them in Glenrock. Had to make a quick getaway. Gun trouble? Would have been if I'd stuck around. Always some trigger-happy young squirt trying to force my hand and make himself a reputation. Ran into one here, Lem Sutter. Oh, stay away from him. He's pure poison. Seems to me, Marshal, you've exceeded your authority letting an armed killer loose in this town. When you know my reasons, you'll think different. Why don't you tell us now? Not here. We'd have the whole town in a panic. We'll meet in my office in an hour. We'll be there. And you better have a good excuse for not throwing Rick Martin in jail. When I have to start making excuses, I'll turn in my badge. Cool down, Bat. I, for one, would be glad to find any reasonable excuse in Rick Martin's favor. No extra charge. Have a shave on the house. <laughs> yeah, I sure can use it. Matt Davis just told me we're having a council meeting. I figured you'd want to look your best. I'm not invited. It's about you, ain't it? Maybe. 
You're getting kind of cagey, ain't you? You seen Laura Mead lately? Uh, no, I... She sticks pretty close to the ranch. You still got her on your mind? Girl like Laura Mead's hard to forget. Martin, I saw you coming through the window and I couldn't believe my eyes. It's been a long time, Laura. Let me look at you. The mask of a gunfighter? Did I ever say that? The last time I asked you to marry me. I remember. I'm sorry, that was a cruel thing to do. Well, I guess I had it coming to me. Come inside, I just made some fresh coffee. Hard to understand such things, white men raiding a peaceful little town. Last year, Quentin hit Rock Springs and killed 36 people. Burned down half the town. Horrible. They're as bad as the Indians. They're worse. There's nothing as mean as a renegade white man. Well, I suppose I'd better pack some things and ride into town. Perhaps I could help with the women and children. I, uh, I'll wait and go in with you. There's a special sort of a question I'd like to ask. If it's the same old question, Rick... The answer is still no. Laura, there's something between us that time couldn't kill. Or am I wrong about that and you don't care anymore? There are a lot of things against us, Rick. Those guns, for instance. Why do you still wear them? Part of my job. What sort of job? I'm a kind of a troubleshooter. What does that mean? Well, it's a rough country, Laura. People getting in trouble with other people. I'm hired to stop it. By killing? Sometimes. Lately, trouble has a way of stopping when I show up. Oh, Rick, you're still living by the gun, and you'll die by the gun. I couldn't face a life like that. Laura, it doesn't have to be that way. If you string with me, we'll go to California and start over. I'll hang up these guns for good. Oh, perhaps you could, Rick. I wish we'd tried it before. But it's too late now. I'm going to be married next Sunday. Well, well, that's different. Anybody I know? It's Canby Judd. Well, he's a lucky man. I'll be getting back into town. Rick. You do understand, don't you? Yeah, sure. Goodbye. Good luck. He didn't stay long. Well, it didn't take long. You could have saved me the ride. Well, Rick, it was meant in friendship. I was hoping a sight of you would make Laura change her mind. Well, it didn't. Well, I reckon you can't blame her. Canby's a big man these days. Chairman of the council, deacon of the church. Yeah, from the signs I saw along the way, why, he owns most of the grassland between here and Laura's place, including Ma's. You know, Jim, Something's been bothering me ever since you wrote about it. You mean about Canby taking over your place? No. About Ma dying so sudden. She never had a sick day since the day I was born. It was mighty sudden, all right. You didn't say anything in your letter about what was wrong with her. Uh, I know. Jim, are you keeping something from me? Now, Rick, that's all in the past. There's no good in bringing it up now. But I am bringing it up now. You're holding out on me. If I am, it's to keep you from running wild and getting into trouble again. Well, there's no chance of that. I got trouble enough. Now, I want the truth. Well, Rick, your ma didn't die in a sick bed. She was shot. 
Murdered. Give me the rest of it. Well, there ain't much more to it. Your mom mortgaged the ranch with Canby Judd for $5,000. She took the cash home with her. At night, some renegades raided the ranch, killed her, and stole the money. How'd they know it was there? You tell me. I knew it was there because she told me about it before she went home. Can't be knew it was there. Now, now, don't jump to conclusions. That don't prove a thing. I want to look at that mortgage. Where will I find it? It was on file at the town clerk office. Wait, Rick, I'll go with you. I can't figure it out. Your ma told me herself she just signed a mortgage. She thought she did. You see these smears? There was another paper pasted over this. Why, that mealy-mouthed pillar of the church. He cheated your ma out of her ranch. It'll take more than a mealy mouth to get out of this. There's no chance of getting any help from the Roundup. Those cow punches are scattered all the way from the Potter River to the Rattlesnake Mountains. It'd take three days to get any of them here. The raid's due to start tomorrow at sunup. My store. The first thing they'll do is loot my store. No, no, you're wrong about that, Ed. The first thing they'll do is hit my place. You know they always get liquored up first. When you two penny pinchers get through worrying about yourselves, there's a whole town and a lot of helpless people to consider. You'll be needing quite a posse, Batch. You can count on me for one. I knew that already, Jim. What about you three? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm afraid I'd be useless in a fight. I haven't fired a gun since I was a boy. <laughs> I, I'm no gunslinger. Of course, if things get out of hand later on, uh, I'd be glad to help. Uh, well, can be. Well, I'm with you, of course. How many men do you think you can raise? There ain't 15 men in town that even got a gun. Then what do you propose to do? The best I can with what I get. And with Jim O'Hara and Rick Martin, Quentin will know that he's been in a fight. Rick Martin? He volunteered to throw his guns in with us. I told him I'd take it up with you three. Well, that beats anything I ever heard, Marshal. You're not seriously proposing to accept help from a notorious killer like Rick Martin. Right now, I'd accept help from the devil himself. So would I, Bat, if I could trust the devil behind our backs. Now, I was thinking the same thing. Now, how do we know that Rick Martin and Quentin aren't in this thing together? Quentin to strike from the outside, and Martin from right here amongst us. What kind of pussyfooting, backbiting buzzers are you three turned into? All right, take it easy, Jim. I know Rick Martin was on the level, but if the majority feels that way about it, I reckon we can get along without him. Well, all I can say is if I didn't have a lifetime stake in this town, I wouldn't raise a hand to help it. Well, now that that's settled, there's no reason why Martin should stay here any longer. No, I reckon not. So if you three want me to order him out, I'll... That seems to be the decision. Just a minute. If we haven't got sense enough to accept his help, at least we can show a little human feeling. Rick put his head in a noose to bring us this warning, and he's earned the right to spend a couple more hours here if he wants to. Well, maybe Jim's right. That is, if Martin doesn't cause any more trouble. If he does, he knows what'll happen. I've given him fair warning. A few hours more can't matter much. So long as he's out of town by midnight. He's my guest. I'll see he's out of town by midnight. So will I. Let's leave it at that, then. Midnight it is. Oh, I have a few guns out at the ranch. I'll bring them in this evening. Thanks. It'll sure help. see you in town. I wanted to express the thanks of the town council for bringing us the warning and also for offering to stay and help fight off the raiders. Couldn't very well do less. Unfortunately, the um, temper of the town is such that we'll be forced to do without your help. Well, that suits me fine. 
There was talk of ordering you to leave immediately, but O'Hara and I insisted that we extend our hospitality until midnight, and that's the way it stands. It's all the time I need. Well, what do you think of your old homestead? Looks just about the same, doesn't it? In a year or two, you won't know the place. I'm tearing everything down and rebuilding. This is going to be the headquarters of a 50,000-acre spread. Things sure break neat for you, don't they, Canby? Well, I guess I just live right. Make yourself at home. I'm going to ride over and tell Laura about the raid. I already warned her. Well, from the look on your face, I guess she told you about our plans. Yes, she did. And I got other plans for you. I don't think I understand you. Where was my mother's body found? Inside or out here? There on the porch, I believe. Well, I believe you killed her. Me? You're crazy. You got her to sign a bill of sale thinking it was a mortgage and you killed her before she could find out about it. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. It's true, every word of it. And you're going to admit it. I'll admit to nothing. It won't do you any good to draw your guns because I know you won't shoot an unarmed man. All right. Let's start even. Now, oh, Rick, wait a minute. There's no point in our... through with you yet. What was this all about? Just what you might expect. You told him about our marriage plans. He's a bad loser. ride, Top Gun. You know, you'd have done a lot better if you'd kept right on going. Because I don't aim to let you ride out of here again. Why don't one of you men rope this mule and tie him up in the shade? He's been in that local weed again. So far, I've only got four volunteers. Anders, how about you? That new repeat and Winchester rifle of yours would sure come in handy. Well, I, I'd like to pitch in with you, Marshal, but I got a cabin right on the road outside of town and a wife and two kids to look after. Bring them into town. We're putting all the women and kids in the church for tonight. Now, if the rest of you fellers don't come through, Tom Quentin can come in here before sunup and take the town before you're even out of bed. If I had 15 or... On a glass for the marshal. No, thanks. Where are you boys from? Down Laramie Way. Holed up last night at Goose Egg. Mm-hmm. 
Eli Slaughter's trading post? Yeah. Roundup's all over there. Figured we'd head north for the summer grass country. That's a good idea. You better keep heading. Tonight? That's right. Now. That's kind of unhospitable, ain't you? Tonight we're worse than that. We're poisoned to strangers. We're getting set for Quentin's raiders. You don't say. They sure get around, don't they? They're a mean bunch. Need any more help? No, thanks. Got all we can use. And by the way, when you're riding out of town, take it slow and easy-like. There's a lot of itchy trigger fingers behind every door and window. Thanks for the warning. We'll uh, be moseying along. Never mind. Drinks are on the house. Hospitality. Yeah. Some hospitality. Now, what's all this tomfoolery about a man behind every door and window? You said yourself you only had four deputies. You want me to tell Quentin that, too? You mean they were Quentin's men? It's just a guess. They could be casing the town for him. Did you know him? No, but they didn't come from Goose Egg. Eli Slaughter hasn't had that trading post for two years. Now they came from a hill camp and close by, because they smelled of pinewood smoke and bacon fat. Well, then why didn't you arrest him? Because I want them to get back to Quentin. If he believes that we're ready for them, he might think twice about coming here at all. But we can't depend on that. We'll have to be ready for him. Well, how about it? Any more volunteers? All right, Marshal. I'll go along. Thanks, Carter. That makes five. Anybody else? Well, then the rest of you better hole up in the church tonight with the women and kids and say a little prayer that Tom Quentin doesn't come there looking for you. What's the idea? You afraid to be seen talking to me? It wouldn't be very smart, considering what I want to talk to you about. All right, I'm listening. Turn around and face out, like you were just waiting for somebody. <laughs> Maybe I am. I know you are, but he isn't coming. The fellow I'm waiting for has got a show. He's leaving town by midnight. He challenged Rick Martin twice today, and he refused to draw. Yeah, he's yellow. He was afraid to draw on me. But I figure next time he'll have to. Not here. When he comes out to his horse, Jim O'Hara will be with him, and probably Marshal Davis. Suits me fine. I want to have witnesses. Those two won't be good witnesses. Either one or both of them. Before you open your mouth, they'd have you covered. All right. What's your deal? To set him up for you. Be no percentage in meeting him alone. Nobody would believe I outdrew him. It won't happen that way. There'll be a crowd around. And everybody will know you outdrew Rick Martin in a fair fight. That ought to just about make you top gun in the territory. Top gun. Keep right on talking. Not here. 
drift on out to the churchyard. I'll join you. When do you figure on looking for Canby? Until about 11.30. Want to give him all the worry I can. Well, if I know him very well, it'll be mighty hard to find at that time. I'll find him, no matter where he is. And I'll take him out of town with me. But Ricky never carries a gun. He will tonight, if I have to give him one of mine. Now, look, I know how you feel about this, but taking the law into your own hands isn't going to solve anything. It's the only law can touch him. Good evening, Laura. Frontier House is honored. Won't you sit down and have dinner with us? No, thank you. I can only stay a few minutes. Rick, I've got to talk to you about something. Oh, I'll see you later. I want a straight answer to a straight question. All right, what's the question? What was your fight with Canby about? What did he tell you? That it was just jealousy. He said you were a bad loser. That sounds like Canby. Rick, I want to know. I saw him over at the church. He's wearing a gun. Well, he's supposed to help fight off the raiders. If you two are going to fight about me, I've got to stop it some way. Laura, you remember when we were kids how I used to draw pictures of you on the blackboard and then you'd rub them off? Please, Rick, I want an answer. That is your answer. You just rubbed me off your blackboard today for keeps. What right would I have fighting over you? Well, then what is it all about? I can't draw you any more pictures. I see. There's no use appealing to you. I should have known better. Yes, ma'am, I guess you should. By gravy. I ought to slit both your gizzards. Get yourselves run out of town and learn nothing. We learn plenty, Quentin. Your friend Bat Davis has got himself an army. The whole town's tipped off. Rick Martin. We, we, we don't know. Didn't see him. Well, it had to be him. Nobody else knew. Casey! Yeah? Come here. Yeah. That was your bright idea, wasn't it? Bringing Rick Martin to see me? Oh, uh, yeah, but... Uh, it seemed like a good idea, but you did all the talking. I reckon we both made a mistake. You know, the trouble is, I got a right to be mistook. You ain't. <laughs> He's getting too old for fighting, knows too much to turn loose. What else you learn at Casper? East Road got buildings on both sides of it. Make a good ambush. Fat Davis knows we'd expect an ambush there. He put most men at the West Road. And, and, and we hit from the east anyway, huh? Yeah. You got it. <laughs> the way Pat Davis talks, he's got men behind every window and door. He was bluffing. He had you two spotted. Probably ain't ten men in town can hit a barn door at ten paces. Bet down. Saddles a crack of dawn. Simpson, this is God's house, and he will take care of us. Oh, thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Come on. Fine state of affairs, I must say. Driven from our homes, forced to take refuge here like a flock of sheep. We're doing the best we can, Mrs. Turner. Marshal, do you think they'll burn our little place down? We left behind everything we own. Now, don't you worry, folks. They won't get your place. We'll see to that. Oh, thank you. Everything's all locked up, Marshal, but the hotel. I'm sorry, darling, that you went to see Rick Martin. I didn't mean to alarm you. It is nice to know that you were so worried about me. I was worried about both of them, and I still am. There's no further cause for anxiety. I've decided to patch things up with Martin peaceably. Oh, Canby, do you think you could? I'm sure I can. 
After all, it was quite a jolt to discover that he'd lost you forever. And I'm afraid that I rubbed it in a little. But I'll apologize to him. Candy, if you do that, you'd prove that you're a bigger man than Rick Martin. Thanks. Now go on in with the others. And don't worry. So long, Jim. Let me know when you get set in California. I might mosey out for a visit. I'll do that. Goodbye, Ben. I'm riding with you, Rick. What for? I found my way in. I reckon I can find my way out. It's my duty to see you across the county line. Why waste the time? I can't get out of this town too soon. All right. You're on your own. There goes what could have been a better half of your posse. Lock up your place, Jim, and let's go join the other half. Well, you got more nerve than I figured. What'd you expect me to do? Run away? Be a good idea if you like living. Get on your horse. Where are we going? A lot of town of ways. I promised Bat I wouldn't mess up his streets. Very considerate. Suppose you do kill me. Where's the profit in that? Who's thinking of profit? I am. $30,000 in my safe. Give you a nice head start in California. I'm willing to do even better than that. I'll admit I made too sharp a deal for your mother's land. I'll give you back the land and the money, too. Was it a deal? No deal. Mount up. If it's your own way, I think you're a fool not to accept my offer. Let's ride. You're running a single track. It's the way I'm built. Now get off your horse and draw. You do a lot better for the town and yourself, pulling that gun on the Quentin gang. I've got something better to do. This empty grave needs filling. One with your name on it. Now get down, or I'll make you draw from where you sit. Yeah, you sure play both ends against the middle. You had this all set up if I turned down your deal. My ace in the hole. Just riding up when I saw Rick Martin draw and shoot him down. Why, you liar, you... Martin! Look, I know it looks bad, Bat, but it's a frame-up from top to bottom. Frame-up or not, Rick, I gave you a fair warning. Now unbuckle the guns and hand them over. Arrest isn't enough. Martin's going to hang for this. We should have hung him when he first come to town. That's what I say. Hang him. Hang him. Go go That's right. There'll be no hanging. Martin will get a fair trial. Let's go.
this what you meant by making peace with Rick Martin? I didn't have a chance. I just caught up with him here. He said you lied, that it was a frame-up. Well, naturally. He's a desperate man. He'd say anything to get out of the trouble he's in. I've known Rick Martin all my life, and I've never known him to tell a lie. Darling, listen. Rick Martin isn't the Rick that we both knew so well. He's become bitter and vindictive. The truth is, he came to town with a chip on his shoulder looking for me. But you said it was only jealousy. I know. I didn't want to worry you. But somehow he blames me for all of his troubles. He even accused me of cheating his mother out of her land. What reason could he have to accuse you of a thing like that? He has no reason. It was a perfectly legitimate business deal. Rick doesn't seem to think so. Yeah, he's being stubborn. But don't worry about it. Someday I'll show you the papers. It's getting late, and you should get some rest. Good night, darling. Good night. Take you down to the county seat tomorrow, and you can tell your story to the judge, providing Quentin doesn't get both of us. If you believe half of what Rick says, why don't you open that cell so he can help us? Because the law says different, Jim. There's a dead man in the churchyard, and here's the killer. Tonight, that's all I got to go on. Trouble with some tin badger. Sometimes they go to a man's head. Never mind the bouquets. Let's get down to the posse. It's a fancy name for seven scared farmers. So long, Rick. So long. Good luck to both of you. With what I got to go on, it'll take more than that. It'll take a miracle. Fred, you go on up in that tower. Bill? You and Joe take cover in that brush on the hillside. You two take cover in the barn. The rest of us will take cover here. What makes you think Quentin will come in this way? It's just a guessing game between him and me. I'm hoping he'll figure I'll defend the other side of town. Yeah? Well, we can't risk the town or the safety of the people on a guessing game. There must be some other way. Well, I'm open to reason. What's on your mind? Why don't we try and buy him off? What with? A promissory note? I happen to have some cash in my safe, and I'm sure Ed Marsh and Hank Spencer will go along. You don't know Quentin and his men. Money doesn't mean a thing to them. They haven't any place to spend it. What they want is this town, food, liquor, and even the women. Perhaps. But I think he'd jump at a chance to make a deal without any bloodshed. And that's what we're going to do. Now, look, Canby. Get this and get it straight. I'm going to do my best to defend this town, and I'm going to do it my way. You'll do it the way the majority of the town council decides. Take your places, men. I'm going to go up on that hill and have a look around. Five years of peaceful living. No engines, no gunfighters. The young'uns ain't never had a face death on a dusty road, and us old ones don't like to remember it.
Well, if this ain't the morning of morning. My old pal, Bat Davis, come out all by himself to extend the hand of welcome. That's right, Tom. I figured you'd be glad to see me. More than glad, Bat, you old fox. Did you bring me the keys to your city? Or is that tin badge on your chest growed heavy and you got a hankering to ride with us for a spell? Neither one. I was hoping to convince you my little town ain't worth taking. It takes some convincing. I've had my eye on her for some time. It's a cozy little place. With a roundup on, a mighty soft touch. Not so soft. You'd lose half your men. And the loot ain't worth it. Well, there's liquor, and vittles, and women. <laughs> I was figuring maybe I was one of the inducements. That's right, Pat. You are. Well, then, let's just make it between you and me. Personal challenge? Like the old days. Now, that's something that you never turned down. Times has changed. Take the gamble, Tom. You and me, we'll walk up the road a piece. If I win, the town's spared. If I lose, she's all yours. What do you say? I ain't that kind of gambler no more. Palaver's over. is upon us. Let us pray. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Quentin's taken the town. What happened to the marshal? He's dead. So are all the deputies. Just as I expected. We should have made that deal with Quentin. Bat Davis tried, and they rode him down. Well, where are they now? What's left of them have taken over your saloon. When they get well liquored up, nobody knows what will happen. We're no longer safe here. Let's take the children and find a place to hide. Please, please. You're safer here in God's house than anywhere else. Please sit down. I thank you. Sit down. Remain where you are. Where are you going? To let Rick Martin loose before Quentin gets to him. Wait, Jim. That's an idea. Rick Martin. What about him? We'll offer him his freedom if he'll help us. His freedom? You have no authority to offer anything to anybody. There's only one law in this town now, every man for himself. We're still the council, and I think that Ed's right. Rick Martin's the only man that can save this town. Well, why not? It's a gunman against a gunman. A few hours ago, you were going to hang him. And now, with a fear of death gripping your puny souls, you want to beg him to fight for you and probably die for you. It's not just our skins. It's every man, woman, and child. And you're his friend. He'll listen to you. I'd be ashamed to ask him. Well, I'm not. Let's get over there. Jim, wait. What did Rick mean when he accused Camby of a frame-up? Please tell me the truth. It ain't good to hear. It'll be good for me. I'm tired of lies and deception. You've been listening to a slippery tongue fella can make a lie stand up and take a bow. I'm just beginning to realize that. Well, it begins back at the time Rick's mother was killed. Well, that's the situation, Rick. We couldn't leave you here locked up with Quentin roaming the town. We're giving you a chance to defend yourself. Well, where are my guns? Here they are, Rick. Hear 
hear that? They're getting all steamed up. The next thing you know, they'll be looting and burning. Can be. I think you and I have some unfinished business. Don't you think that can wait? The town's practically defenseless. We'll need all the men there are left. Rick, I've said a lot of harsh things about you. I'm almost ashamed to suggest what's in my mind. But if you can find it in your heart to forgive us, here's a marshal's badge. We'd be proud if you'd wear it. Rick, don't do it. These people aren't worth going out and dying for, and that includes me. I was just as stupid and blind as they were. Right out of town. It's all we deserve. Get up to the church. See that nobody leaves. Yes, Marshal. I'm going with you. Be glad to have you, Jim. I'm willing to forget our differences, Rick, and back you up. No, thanks. I got enough facing me without worrying about who's backing me up. Rick! You're right. There is still something worth fighting for. I guess I was wrong about everything. Even your guns. Take care of yourself. And come back. I'll be back. Let's go, Jim. girl who professes to detest gunfighters, that was quite a tender farewell. I wanted to let him know that I appreciate what he's going to do for all of us. I offered to help him and got insulted. From what I learned tonight, that was hardly an insult. So you've really taken Martin's wild charges to heart, in spite of all my attempts to explain. I don't know what to believe. You tell me one thing, O'Hara another. It's not explanations I need now, it's the truth. But of course, darling. And I'll be glad to answer truthfully anything that he's told you. But this is neither the time nor the place. Come, let me take you back to the church where you'll be safe. No, I'm staying here. Any idea how many men Quentin has left? I saw six all told right up to the saloon. trouble of looking for him. Boys, let's give our pal Martin a warm reception. for you at sunup. I figured you'd be out there fighting alongside your friend Bat Davis. I offered my services. They threw me in jail. Have a drink. 
It's on the house. Jail, huh? Fine hometown you got. Good thing you broke in, or I'd be hung by now. How'd you get loose? I got one friend. He set me free. Figured you'd be gunning for me. He figured correct. I'm still waiting to hear why you crossed me up, dipped off my raid. Tried to square myself with the town. I guess I should have had more sense. You cost me a lot of men. So it calls for a showdown. Showdown will cost you more. I got a better deal, Flint. Well, we're all still listening. It's about a pile of loot was shipped in here by the railroad last week for the cattle buying. How much? 30,000 in gold, another 20 in greenbacks. $50,000, huh? It's a mouth-watering sum. Trouble is, money ain't no use to us. There ain't a town we can spend it in. There is now. Jackson Hole. Jackson? Is she wide open again? Where you been, Quint? Boys opened her up last winter. Full of bright lights, gambling, women, the best of liquor and food, and not a lawman's badge within 200 miles. Wits, Gorse, Torchy. Rustle me up some blasting powder and a hand drill. Rick, shake hands with the town banker. I gotta get to my office. Uh, there's no safe to blow, Quent. The money isn't in the bank. They took it out as soon as they heard you were coming. Well, speak up. Where's she hid? Uh, you know better than that, Quent. We haven't made a deal yet for my cut. Your cut? For what? For leading you to it. <laughs> This is my town, boy. I'll find it if I have to tear it down. You, uh, you won't have time. They've sent for help by sundown. Every gun shooting cowpoke within 50 miles will be riding in. All right. What's your deal? We'll split her down the middle. Half for you, half for me. Fine. Now. Where's the loot? Now, I'm not going to tell you, Quint. Give me two of your men and I'll lead them to it. Only two I don't want to be ganged up on. Now, Rick, you ought to trust me better than that. Sure, I trust you. You trust me. But we can't trust each other. <laughs> Rick, you old catamount. May you live until I kill you. Of course, you and Ben go with him. Dorchy. Slip out on the porch and watch where they go. Give him half, are you, Quint? Sure. Rick Martin can have half of everything I got. In here. Who'd look for all that loot in a broken down hotel? Nobody. That's why it's here. Junk out of there. There's a trap door under it. Go ahead, Ben. What would they be doing with a trap door in here? Cyclone cellar. Ah, I never heard of a cyclone in Wyoming. Stand still or you'll see one now. Drop your belts. Back out of here. 
Tie him up. These Jaspers out of the way cut down the odds by two. What about Quentin and the others? He won't be long coming. He's not the trusting kind. Quentin, don't you reckon I've had time enough to dig up that gold? I was giving him one bottle on to dig her up. And that's it. Now we'll go down and stake our claim to it all. Let's go, boys. You sure called a turn on Quentin. It's easy. All you got to do is think like a corkscrew. Watch the window. Side window. Looks like Martin's blown with the gold. No, he couldn't even lift his half of it, let alone get it out of the hotel. Boss, is Martin still around? Well, what's the matter? Don't you hear me? Get in there and untie him. Cover you from here. Hold it. Stay right where you are and don't move. What are you waiting for? Untie him. They can't, Quint. You'll have to come in and untie him yourself. Rick Martin, should have known you couldn't trust no two gunslinger. You double crosser. Just took the crown away from you, Quint. Unbuckle your belts. Left hand. You're all washed up, Quint. You couldn't raise enough men to raid the old folks home. That wraps it up. Nobody makes a fool of Tom Quentin twice. I'll be here waiting for you. Jim, is there a back stairs at this place? Yeah. Take care of your guests. Don't worry, they won't get out of here without paying their bill. Get across the street.
How about a showdown, Quint? You call the play, Mr. Marshal. All right, step out. Take your time. I won't draw till you go for your gun. friend behind your back with a gun. Ah, you can do better than that, Quint. You're slipping. Well, have it your way. He's sure aiming to get you in the back. That's right, Rick. If he doesn't get you, I will. Well, Rick, your play Go for your gun. Sure, we should reconsider, Rick. Settle down here with us. After all, it's your hometown, Rick. We'd sure be proud to have you. Yes, and you'll get your land back. We'll see to that. Well, well, it's like this, folks. I know it's well meant and I appreciate it, but I, um. Well, Laura and I figured that we'll be happier starting over in California. Good luck, Rick. Hank. Don't forget, Jim, we're coming on that visit. I'll be there, son, before the snow flies. Just pick me a palm tree and a banana bush. I aim to get me some winter sunning. 